and <laughs> light's gorgeous. Yeah, this no, it's fabulous. I, this is the brightest I can get. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fabulous. How are you today? I'm very good. Good morning. Yeah. How, is, how is life treating you, Lizzie? Yeah, you know, honestly, I think um, we're in a really good place, right? In the UAE. Um, God bless. God right. Bless. Um, when you see, so I'm, I'm originally from Canada and when you see all the craziness going on back at home, I mean, obviously the populations are a lot larger, yeah. so it's a lot harder to, uh, to, to maintain balance. Uh, but the, you know, things like everything from the hoarding of food, I mean, we, we don't have any of that here. Um, and I don't know if you've seen some of the imagery yeah, at I nighttime. I've seen I've seen the footage. It's quite scary. Seeing like like miles and miles of queues, people with, yeah. waiting with the trolley to get in the store and to get. The, but, so this is so desperate. Like we're yeah. living in like it's like it makes us feel that we're living in a war time, and that that's right. It's um. And, you know, and it, it's so strange. Yeah. It's so uh, strange. Sorry, you know, it, it's interesting you're using that analogy because I always say we're so blessed that we have never seen war, really um in our lifetime like not a huge world war right but um this this is yeah this is pretty pretty negative the situation right yeah yeah. The, the world. The, yeah 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 and the problem is that it creates mimetism so the more people see it and the more they want to yeah. act like that like they have the fear of being too late to go and get their food before it That's gets so into shortage so but yes, th yes. thank God here in this, in this region of the world, we are so blessed, we are so spoiled. Uh, the government is taking exactly the right actions. You won't, you, yes. won't see, you won't see such a thing here, you know, like um, they have no. enough stocks of food and, and medicines and, 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 the, and the rulers have promised, have pledged to, to, the, to, to the residents that every, everything will be provided uh, around the clock. Yes. So we don't, have, we don't have to worry about it. Um, and uh, and also you saw that um, we're gonna soon have um, the drive-through testing centers, right? They opened the one in Abu Dhabi, and exactly. I think there's an announcement that there's gonna be one in Dubai now. So, yeah. Yeah, all very good, all good. <laughs> <laughs> all good. So you're originally from Canada. I am. Yeah. And how about yourself? I'm uh, I'm French. Okay. Right? I'm French. I'm I'm French, but with Moroccan background. So I was born in oh. France, born and raised in France, and my both parents are Moroccan. Right, uh, and 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 you go home to Morocco ever? Because uh, I, I love Morocco, so that's oh. why I'm asking. Uh, when mm -hmm. I get the chance, yes, definitely. When I get the chance, okay. when, uh, my parents, well, my family, my core family is based in France, and sure. the rest of my uh, of my family of my family is in Morocco in Meknes. Oh my God! Yes, what a wonderful place! Yeah. yeah. Love Anyways, and, um, uh, a good mix of cultures, and uh, I love Canada. I've been in Canada. I spent six months in Montreal, Quebec, in the Quebec oh. uh, region. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's a fabulous part. Um, yeah, when you're in Montreal, it doesn't feel like the rest of Canada, does it? It's um, it's uh, it's like Europe. Um, it's a fabulous part of. Yeah, it's a fabulous yeah. part of. Canada. I had it was back in 2006. I had my exchange program, my university exchange program in uh, in in Trois Oh really? Lovely people. Yes, yes. Canadians are very, very friendly. Lovely people. Oh. It was freezing <laughs> though. It was like minus minus forty. Uh, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so you're a real Canadian if you manage to survive a winter yeah. and you didn't run away. Yes. Yeah, so we went, get. I, 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 yeah, I got through this. That was the coldest. <laughs> moment in my entire lifetime you know <laughs> um okay so you now understand why you know you can understand why my, my husband's also canadian so we're like nice. okay we're very happy to not be in the cold of canada um you know even though we were born there we don't miss the cold at all so yeah, yeah we like the hot weather the thing is that <laughs> the wind when it's very cold and you have a like a snowstorm and you have all those snowflakes going to your face brutal it's oh, brutal it's Bro, um, uh, I, yeah. I, I even heard stories about people losing a piece of their ears because it wasn't no. covered and stuff. So I was like, oh. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my for God. Real, um, so have you been to Chicago? No, no. Okay. No. So well, my only, so I lived in Toronto for about four or five years. My only solace when I saw how cold it was in Toronto was to always know it was going to be colder in Chicago. 
it, you know, it could be minus 20 in Toronto. It would always be minus 30 in Chicago. And I, it's just, yeah, when you talk about the, that sleet and everything, it's crazy. All right, Lucy, it's, uh, it's very nice uh, to meet you. Thank you very much for accepting my, uh, my the Zoom request. And um, well, it's a very casual conversation that we're going to share to, to the audience and LinkedIn. Um, awesome. So, Thank, thanks know, for it's, having me, Munir. It's, it's a real pleasure. It's, it's a real, topic. real pleasure. Yeah, it's a real pleasure. And, you know, to, nowadays uh, it's tough. To, it, we're going through challenging times, but we're making the most out of it. And we're trying to, to communicate a positive message to, to the people who are self isolating in their homes and uh, they, they're looking for some interesting and natural content um, to bring add value to their, to their own uh, day to day. And today's about networking. So as, as I may have noticed earlier, as I may have mentioned to you, Signature Network, uh, my company is specialized in bringing people together based on their, um, on their profiles. So picture this, it's like we're like a Tinder for business. Okay. All right, so we link people, uh, we link like-minded uh, people together. So whether we connect startup uh, entrepreneurs with investors, Whenever there is a matchmaking opportunity business-wise, uh, we have a platform and we help people uh, connect together. And the, 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 the objective is to either have a long-term um, partnership, relationship, uh, business-wise still, um, convert into uh, business deals, so sign contract. And um, so we connect job seekers with recruitment companies, we connect bloggers with retailers, um, and experts from the same field, if, if um, and you name it. So when we see a, a matchmaking opportunity, we we step in. So originally we 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 organize events, physical events, but due to the circumstances, uh, we do it all digital now. We have to adapt to the situation, and I think people really need help. Yes, no, it's a wonderful initiative. No, Thank wonderful. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, and thank God so far we had a very a very high success in in terms of finding people uh, job opportunities, um, work, you know, finding people investments uh, uh, opportunities, and, and and so on. So I wanted to check with you, Lucy. I I've, I I've seen I've checked your profile. I've seen some of your podcasts. I've seen some of your content. Um, you really you're very present in the in the business world. I think you're very involved in the in the woman empowerment in the woman in the in the, in the woman community, and I really appreciate that. And that will um, I will jump on that opportunity to to, to let you know about the project where on, on which I'm working on, uh, which can be a perfect fit for you. It's about woman initiative. It's called Niza Soul, uh, and Niza in Arabic stands for woman soul. Okay. So we have we have one one new one part of our business will be only dedicated to women empowerment, like helping women find a job, helping women how to write their CV, how to build self confidence, how to be more autonomous, um, and etc. So we have a wonderful partnership uh, taking shape with this company Nizasal, um, and the the the, the, the managing uh, director of that company is actually a local lady. A local lady who's okay. very connected who has a strong woman uh, network database oh that's great that's great and is it happening already this yes is it's, it's, okay. it's fresh yes it's fresh as okay. we speak uh, it's just been established and uh, we are very happy to be part of that initiative and to make other people contribute to that to that powerful initiative yes i would love to learn more please absolutely yeah absolutely. Is, there, is there a website or it's a it's a well it's a website yes but it's not, it's more than a website it's a platform it's a platform sure, sure. because we're going to be having like networking events for for dedicated to women um yes. apart from our core activity where of course we target the, the whole population regardless sure. of nationality and stuff but mainly we'll have this necessarily will be dedicated to women only okay okay so whatever they Anyways. Bring, yeah so uh, yeah, and it's, no, no. But it's all about uh, it's all about networking and helping people to move on. Yes. In, in their lives. So Lucy, um, tell me more about yourself uh, in regards to networking. Are you do you like networking? Do you attend networking events? Yes. Uh, you know, I feel that um, because we live in a place where everyone's from somewhere else. 
it's very open in terms of being able to make connections. So for me, networking or, you know, I, and, and as you know, in, in recent years, that, that term has had a bit of a stigma attached to it. But I have always naturally gravitated towards learning about people um, and understanding, you know, everyone's story. And so it's very, um, it, it's a, it's, you know, walking into a room, it's very comfortable for me to seek out new people. I don't feel that, um, you know, you, there, there doesn't need to be a set agenda. Um, you know, if you're in an event and you've met a few people that you, you know, connected with on an on a intellectual level, or, um, you know, someone, even one person you want to stay in touch with or, or have a coffee with, then, then that's, that's a success. So, um, but of course, I think we need to, you know, we're all short on time. So we all need to decide where we want to spend our time networking. And there's no shortage of networking events um, in the UAE, as you know. Absolutely. There's more than 2,000 networking events every, yeah. every year in Dubai itself, without kind right. of mentioning Abu Dhabi and other right. Emirates. Um, do you, well, I want to check with you. Do you, do you distinguish socializing? I mean, for, for Lucy, is networking resonating with selling or is it two different things? Um, well, I think for myself, I, I, and, and again, because I'm, I'm sort of really kind of ring fencing my time. I go to an event. Let's talk about physical events right now. Yes, physical. I go to, I go to a physical event if I feel I'm going to get some sort of learning from it. Yes, meeting other people is a, another wonderful aspect of going to an event, but I'm motivated by the content. I'm motivated by what what I I will get out of it from a learning perspective, and then naturally, if other people are going there to that same event, then um, already you know that it's going to be like-minded people that you're going to meet. Selling that happens after, perhaps, or or maybe there's a you know if if you're going with a you know sometimes I have coincidentally a, a, a need like for instance if I'm I know I'm going to need need a few guests on on my um, down to business series and I'm I'm I have one more guest slot and I'm talking to someone and they resonate then I might just right there and then say hey I do this series do you think you would have any interest in coming on in the in the future all right so I don't I don't hesitate to ask if if it makes sense in the context okay excellent that's uh, that's actually what we have noticed as well depending on the people you have in front of you and the opportunity the format might completely change based on your needs and the, and the people's needs sure. uh, are, are you i i saw that you are part of a networking group a networking community like um I've seen uh, this yeah. thing called the Women uh, Angel Investors. Is that a networking group, a networking community? It, so the Women's Angel Investor Network is an angel network where we pool our money and we invest yeah. in female-founded startups. And so it's Amazing. a group of women that and all the investors are, are, are female. It's a group, obviously, that's motivated by a wanting to make money on their portfolio, uh, be wanting to learn about the world of angel investing uh, and C also wanting to invest in female founders. So it's, uh, there, there's a lot of wonderful benefits of being part of Wayne. And yes, uh, you know, we're a fabulous network. There's uh, over the five, six years, we have an angel network with, of about 50 women now. And so that is a wonderful wow. community. And in, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, so, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. I, I was going to say in the past, <laughs> I have been a co-chair of actual networks, if you will. So right. there was a network that was called 85 Broads. Now it's called Elevate. And the whole, that is a, a, a true network, if you will. So they have monthly events. Um, you know, some are thought leader sort of uh of engagement type style events others are simply meet and greet uh, perhaps cocktail 
type events. And the demographic are typically women uh, that are, are working uh, full time. Amazing. And how do you, how, how does the, the, um, how can women join this, this, uh, this, this community? What, what are so, the criteria? Yeah, no. So selection? Elevate, yes, no. So Elevate Network, you could just go on and there's chapters all over the world. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's a chapter here in Dubai. And I, you know, so I'm often asked what networking events should I go to? So if you're a female and uh, if you're looking for, you know, connectivity with other uh, women in the workplace, Elevate is a very good networking platform. Now, I was just asked to speak recently, and this is an example of what you were saying. There's 2,000 events that happen. There's a, there's a lot of new uh, uh, organizations popping up because what, for whatever reason, you know, the, the, the organizers are finding that, you know, there's, they're not finding things that resonate with them. So there's a fabulous other networking group called women exchange. Yeah, and I know it, right. And they're fabulous too. And I, and I noticed the demographics that perhaps a little bit younger, but again, women that are all working and 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 looking for content because their events are usually around a topic and and there's a panel excellent so there so there's a lot and and it's uh, these these organizations you just find them either on instagram or online and you know some of them have um a, a subscription model uh, and some for instance women exchange does not yet have a subscription model you can go and attend their events it's it's a free, are they free events? Yes, for for Women Exchange right now it is free, and for Elevate there are different levels of membership. So if you're a corporate, there's a corporate membership, right. and if you're an individual, and there's even a student level membership, not not costly at all. Oh, that's that's great. Are you part of the Canadian Business Council? I am. I'm very, very pleased to say that I sit on the advisory board of the, of the CBC. Amazing. And they also are, you know, moving with, uh, with the situation and now their events are also being put in the form of, of uh, webinars. webinars. Yeah, webinars. Yes, yes. I, I, and, and so I think it is really important to go and seek out uh, the, the business councils if not of your country, again, these business councils are very open, right? So the British Business Council is the largest um, in the UAE. And then, of course, there's, there's also the American Business Council. French there, Business Council. So many. so many. Yeah, Swiss Business yeah. Council. And, and sometimes, they do, sometimes they do this, this inter-business inter council networking event. They do a lot. And those are highly valuable because, yeah, then, then again, everyone's coming together, yeah. you know, for That's the right. same purpose. What, one, right. more, one more community I'd like to point out uh, is your alumni groups. So Which alumni, group, sorry? Al al your alumni, the university that you alumni. attended. Yes. And so know. again, a lot of the alumni groups also tend to join together uh, to co-host events. And, and so you might think that, you know, you don't, and again, you know, you don't have to go to every single one, but there might be one where you're like, okay, this is going to be worthwhile because it's, it's with 10 other alumni groups. Or maybe you know, if it's a, if it's a Suhoor or an Iftar, and again, it's a whole group of individuals and you, and, and you even go to just that one a year, you, you might find that that's a value. And have you, have you always been a networker or it was, uh, it wasn't easy for you to, to, to step, to step into networking and social events and to socialize with people. Can you tell me more about I, how I, you get into that? You know, I've always been fairly extroverted and again i've always just been very curious about people so i think that you know what does networking mean it, it means you know going into typically a, a, a physical space and connecting you know albeit superficially initially on 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 some sort of level I've, I've always been comfortable doing that. 
and I realized that not everybody's comfortable doing that. And if you're not comfortable doing that, don't do it. There, there's, you know, now we've got so many wonderful <laughs> platforms, right? We've got LinkedIn, you know, we've got so many ways of, of um, connecting with people where you don't have to feel awkward in, in a room, you know, full of hundreds of people that you, and you, the last thing you want to do is be there. And it, and it shows, right? If you don't want to be there, then, then don't be there. It's fascinating the fact that you say if you're not comfortable with networking, don't do it. And guess what? This is exactly the same statement that I had from uh, Spencer Lodge uh, during my first during my first podcast ever with him. Uh, he was that was the advice he gave to to people. He said if you're oh, not net, if you're not comfortable in networking, don't do it. So now my yes. next question is: What would you advise? What kind of tips would you give to, for example, lady, woman, woman, who? are very reluctant to networking but sure. the intention is still there so what kind of advice would you give them to to encourage them to do the to do the first step and maybe they will find it amazing at the end of the day i mean as far as i'm concerned i was in the same situation when i was a bit shy before i find that I... hard to believe manera <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. really <laughs> <laughs> okay okay go on yes no. and then how did you how did you overcome that then just out of curiosity uh i had no choice basically when i first came to dubai <laughs> when i when i first came to dubai i didn't know anyone yeah and the intention was to find a job so i heard about the french uh, the, this french business community uh french business council uh, they yes were, they're fabulous they too. were they're fabulous and they were organizing yeah. a gala it was a gala um and i said okay that that well, that would be the opportunity to be to meet french people and to meet all, all people over all, all, all the national another nationality than french and uh and i loved it i just registered uh, and i went and it was it was more than business it was purely socializing and i yeah. and i started enjoying events ever since and uh, i'm talking back that was back in 2014 and um between those times, I attended two more than 200 networking events because I absolutely love that and I generated a lot of business out of it. And it's, I just enjoy it. It's a, for me, it's like Fabulous. a game. Fabulous. I, okay, so in a natural way and, uh, and you know, following up, it's, it's, I really want to prove to people that if I approach someone, it's not because I have an intention behind it, I don't have any reservation. Good. Like it's a natural interaction, it's a natural rapport. Yes. But then if there yes. is an opportunity to grab, uh, then of course, if I can help or if some, if I'm seeking help, um, why not? Yes, I, 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 love, I love what you're saying. But I also like what you, you just reminded me of something I wanted to say. You know, if you're not comfortable networking, don't do it. But also, if you are in a networking situation, ju just be yourself, right? And people either take you or they don't take you. But, but... And, you know, I don't feel like there's any high stakes, like when you go into a room and you're networking there, you know, what, what, what's the worst thing that can happen? But, you know, you come, you come out of it with a few new contacts or a few business cards or even just one, right? And you had a good conversation with one person because there's definitely people that are comfortable just talking one-on-one -on -one in a room full of lots of people. And, and it depends. Sometimes I feel like that. There, there's some days where I'm like, I, I'm, this person seems happy just talking to me, you know, for a lot longer. I'm happy talking to this person a lot longer. You know, you don't, uh, you don't need to be meeting like 10, 10 people in an hour. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. um, uh, one of the questions that I, I like asking is regarding the technology because now we have plenty of tools allowing us to connect like we have microsoft written recently microsoft has, has released a, an amazing feature called microsoft teams when you can change the background of your house you can change your own background you can interact you can um like remove the the, the background noise while while talking and so on you have a zoom that we are using right now um uh, there is uh, cisco skype whatever and um Regarding to the AI, artificial intelligence, I mean, this is a technology which allows people to, you know, sometimes when you go to a LinkedIn profile, you can see suggestions of profile that might interest, that might be of your interest. Um, and this is done either by 
using artificial intelligence or using a technology what we call machine learning. So the, the machine uh, screens your habits and based on your actions, they will give you something that is very similar. Yes. Now, in regards to physical networking, as you mentioned, do you think such a technology would help people filter the audience they want to interact with? Or do you think that we still need a human being like me and you to, to do the filtering and to, to, to do matchmaking? That, that's a fabulous question. I, uh, let's, let's, look, let's talk about the LinkedIn feature. I actually am very grateful for that feature because I use LinkedIn as my main platform. And uh, of late, I've been really focusing on the gaming and esports sector. Wow. So I'm really grateful when I see uh, suggestions of people that I should be connecting with in that space. And as a result, I've met some really amazing people. I've been able to connect with some amazing people in the industry. So very, very grateful. Then, though, after that matching, what happens? If I want someone, for instance, to write an article about gaming or esports, I still need to connect with them somehow. Yes, that might be then, okay, I've linked in with you. Now I'm going to send you an email. But maybe at some point, we would still need to do a Zoom call. You're, so, good at, you're good at following up after events and after meetings or i you know honestly i am just terrible i'm very good on emails and um on following up after events not so much i used to enter cards into my database but now what i do instead is i find the individual on linkedin so again that's another good use of that platform Right. If you're not necessarily, if you don't have the time, and we don't typically have the time to enter um, all the contacts, then simply find the person on LinkedIn. Yeah. Do you find useful the exchange of business cards during an event, or do you think it's so, uh, it can I be mean, done differently? So I am very old school. Well, I, I'm very old school, and also I lived and worked in Asia for a long time, and so business cards at that point in time was the way to. That, that was almost like a greeting, right? Okay. So, um, but you will get a kick out of this. I think um, I was at an event recently and I gave, I took out a business card and someone said to me, oh, business cards, um, how quaint. You know, so it's sort of like, you know, not, it's not necessarily the done thing, you know, with everyone, but also what I really like, again, going back to, to LinkedIn is the LinkedIn feature on your phone right, where you can tap and link with the people around you just using um, your, your iPhone. So you don't even have to do a physical exchange of cards. That's, that's very true. And uh, the fact yeah. that if you have something which is linked to, 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 to LinkedIn profile, the LinkedIn profile is evolutive and gets updated regularly. Because if you change position in a business card, you have to reprint it, you have to retype it, you have to, and people don't get your, your up-to-date contact emails and phone, mobile phones. So it's, right. um, it's really useful to have an online, uh, an online platform for that. And, and if Munir, if I can mention one more thing while I'm thinking about it, um, now in conferences, depending on the, the budget that the conference ha is, has been given, for, for some of the large conferences, as you know, you're able to see all the attendees, right, with the app. And right. what I have found, I would encourage people, so for instance, if I'm going to an education conference, and I'm looking through all the attendees and I'm specifically trying to find someone in e-learning, I have actually reached out to people using the app ahead of time, ahead of the conference, and said, let's try to get together at the conference and, and, and try to make some meetings. And then vice versa, other people have done the same thing with me. So I actually find that um, a, a very uh, nice kind of entree into face-to-face -face networking. So you connect with the person, you both know you're gonna be at the same conference for two days, and, and then that's a nice way of asking for a meeting and, and being specific about why you want to meet or have a coffee. Yeah, you have, you have a similar um, concept which already exists right now. If you go to, uh, there is a mobile application called Swipe, Swipe Card. Uh, yes. when you can go to, if you attended, I don't know if you attended events like JITEX, like 
uh, RB in travel market, the ATM, which has been postponed now, uh, Gold Food. And in Signature Network, we're also developing a, a mobile application called BizMatcher. Uh, it stands for business matching. So we collect the profiles of attendees in advance, all the profiles. And depending on your intention of attending the event, if you're looking for an investor, or if you're here just for networking and socializing with people from the same field, if you're looking for a job opportunity, you name it. So there is an offer right. and there is a demand. So we collect the profile in advance and we see potential matchmaking. We organize and we suggest a potential matchmaking opportunity to save people's time. And should they agree, they will sit on a dedicated table to save 90% of their time. Because we have noticed that if there is an average between four to five hours in a networking event before you can reach to the person you really want to see. Oh, interesting statistic. Okay. All right. Mm. So... Mm -hmm. You get, especially with, with C-level people and investors and VIP people, they don't really have much time. Sometimes they really have to rush. They can't spend more than half an hour doing an event and just they just head back to their normal Correct. activities. So Correct. this is what we are we are working on is to uh, predefine the matchmaking in events to save everyone's time. And it's going to be interactive with a mobile phone when you can see people's profile. And if they are happy, they can meet you face to face and there is a there is actually a, a limited time to do that and if you want to take the conversation to the next level you can actually share your contact details because contact details are not always shared most of the when you when you, in this region or, or anywhere in the world people uh, from the sea level or people who are really well known in the business industry investors they don't really want to get bothered by whatsapp messages call phone calls random phone calls or being approached or being harassed so and this is a, very important to us and this is what i have noticed and the reason why i established this business as well is to to protect people's privacy uh, linkedin is linkedin is good well any, anyone can write to linkedin but here sure. uh, we don't see that we don't see the need of having a messaging system because it might bother people. So if you're happy to do business with this person after the event is done, yes, you can share your contact details. Otherwise, you just keep it quiet. And if you don't want to meet someone, you just say, "No, I don't want to meet you. Thank you." The person will be notified, and they won't dare approaching you physically. So I sure. think that gives uh, that gives a space, a security space for everyone, and that's. I think something that has to be fulfilled nowadays. No, that's a wonder. So BizMatch sounds like it's it will be widely you, taken up because if if a, if a conference organizer doesn't already have a tool like that, that's very useful. And as you were uh, elaborating on on the functions, it's also making me think. You know, part of why people get frustrated about networking is, I guess, they feel there should be some sort of outcome, but through your through your tech it sounds like it would force people to also be very intentional as to wh why do i want to attend this event who do i want to see and why do i want to see this person exactly right exactly. so if, if 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 you come with that intention and uh almost you know it, it sounds transactional but but you know it's time your time that other person's time so make the best of it. That's so I right. think this is going to actually help people uh, where, where they feel like, oh, networking is a waste of time. Right? Exactly. How often do you exactly. hear that? Yeah, 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 exactly. And yeah. the question which I, uh, that I asked you about the follow-up, um, the problem nowadays is that people are fully packed with stuff to do. They have a, they have a huge to-do list. So once the event is done, they don't even have time to follow up. True. And in this region so where it's so... We are living in a in a in a in a fast-paced environment where if I meet you today during an event, the following day you might forget about who I am. I might forget about who you are. So if I call you to follow up with what's your name? Uh, where did we have we ever met? Oh yeah. okay. So and all the efforts and achievements uh, that, that I have accomplished during the event, it's all lost. It's all going to the bin. So I have to do it over and over again to make you to make myself remembered by writing it a nice email and following up with a call. So we, we, start, we decided to integrate uh, like auto templates, but auto email templates already pre-filled and you just have to uh, tweak, it, tweak the message a little bit to fit your needs and, and to send to the, to the person. Oh my gosh, that's fabulous. So that's, that's it. Yes. That saves time. Easy. Yes, that's absolutely, easy. absolutely. But that's also, 
um, I think people really appreciate if someone follows up with an email. I don't think many people do. So then also that distinguish, distinguishes you, right, in, in terms of the re recipient. Yeah, it's very easy to get forgotten here because there are so many events. Uh, you, can, you can attend you know, like five events a week here. So Easily. 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 I agree easily. with you. Easily. So that, that, that's, that's the reason we, we, we started all of this. Um, yeah, so thank, thank you very much. And I, want you, I really want you to, 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 to finish this conversation in a positive note and uh, <laughs> say to our audience some, some nice words about you know, what's happening right now with the COVID-19 uh, spread. Yeah. How, what can you say to reinsure the people who are still in a fear mode, uh, self-isolating yeah. and, and because there is a lot of uncertainty, how to release them from this uh, from from this negative uh, world? Yeah, well, I think it's wonderful. First of all, to have people like yourself sharing you. like content out there and much. sharing positive uh, stories about you know, for instance, networking. You know, things that we take for granted that have been done typically in person, but we can we can do it online. We can do it. You know, I always say that if something like this had to have happened we're lucky that it's happened now when we have so much access to technology and because of access to technology so how can you be spending your time and i actually just put together a very quick video about spending time uh self-isolating and there is you know everything from being able to listen to um music classical music you know one republic there is so much that's free out there and everyone oh, yeah. realizes it's a trying time. So, you know, all, all technology companies are providing content for free. Right. And so what about, you know, I talked about intellectual stimulation. There is no shortage of courses that you can be taking right now. If, if you have the time, like if you go on to Coursera, I, I think um, there's like 600 something courses on there. That's just one platform. Uh, and for instance, Yale is offering their most popular course of all time, the science of happiness, that's being offered for free. So you can that's do great. that. And no, it's, it's, it's just wow. amazing. And then we talked about all the business councils. So many of the business councils are immediately putting their networking events online, right? And so you can join uh, the, the Canadian Business Council had one last week. I think they're having another one uh, this coming week. So there's, there, you're going to find that if you, if you take advantage of some of these things, that you won't feel isolated at all. You're, you're just going to, the natural world we be, will become Zoom meetings and Zoom conversations. So, um, and then also I always say, if you're able to provide your own content, th then why not do that? You know, use, use Zoom, use webinars, and share out you know, your thoughts, your ideas, whether it's on Instagram or what, whatever platform you feel comfortable with. It, it's great. It's good to hear. And uh, yes, definitely, we won't stop doing it uh, to make people happy. Uh, to give some content to people, to give tips to 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 to, to people out there, to business owners, uh, you name it, any 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 kind of, of profession, to to fulfill their day and uh, and and hopefully they can they can make they can make a good use of of the, of the content. So how do you how do you usually uh, spend your time self isolating? Do you have any specific hobby that you do? Uh, um, yeah, no, I mean, so usually, and one of the things I should have mentioned was all the free fitness apps too, right? And, and yeah. fitness videos. And so I usually start my day you know, with some sort of physical exercise. And I have a 14 year old son. And because he's 14 years old, he's pretty independent with the homeschooling or the e-learning that, that we just started. Uh, this is the second week, right? And so, um, you know, my, my hobbies right now, I talked about the e-gaming and e-sports and I'm really passionate about the future of work related to that specific sector. But I don't think everyone knows a lot about that sector. And I think there's still some stigma around it. So I had attended a few 
e-sport events and realized, oh my goodness, there's so much going on. If I could distill this conference into a book and you know have it accessible to educators, parents, students, it, it might um, it might allow people to discover huh, the the benefits of perhaps thinking of having a career in the future in in esports. Anyway, so I'm working on putting a, a book together. So that keeps me pretty Fabulous. busy. It's a, it's a good time too, because people then I'm, I'm using contributing authors. So people have time to, to write, but um, I keep very busy with all my volunteer work and that requires a, a lot of meetings. So whether it's with the Canadian business council or with the American school of Dubai or with the world business angels forum, which is a, which is another group of angels. That's a global network. And, I, I, you know, someone was telling me yesterday, I feel like I'm busier than I was before the self-isolation. <laughs> that could be I'm true. sure you feel this. Yeah, that I'm sure you feel true. this. Yeah. yeah. Well, usually what I do after, after every podcast that I record, I, I, write, I write it all. So I write all the subtitles. Oh, wow. So, you, you, I, really? You, like, you write it all yes. word for word? Yes, I write it all. I write it all, and that really helps people who are suffering from impairment, number one. Yes. And also people can see our content without sign, sound. So if you take some platforms like Instagram or like um, LinkedIn, some people really just scroll down and they don't click on the play button. So you already, you, you still are able to see the subtitles. So you can yes. still get into the, in, into, the, into the video content without having to play it. I think it's very yes. useful. This this is, is very this, this is how I feel as far as I'm concerned. So it might take up to five hours to subtitle an entire podcast, depending on how long it is. It would it would take about that long, but I'm yeah. impressed you're doing that yourself. I'm doing um, it myself, yes. And yeah, I, I, yes. Can, I can't really rely on AI. It's good. It's great because still, even if you have AI to do that for you, you still have to go and correct, uh, you know, small, uh, you know. Um, mistakes, spelling mistakes, and uh, so I better do it myself since I know, I know the you're content. right because you know the content. But you'll yes. find this funny because on one of my recent uh, video segments, and I do agree the subtitling is important. But the production company I use uses an outsource provider, and so what came back was the interviewer, the person I was interviewing, wanted to say an our unique selling proposition as a business. So she was saying, so our USP as a business, but what came back was our USB. Okay. And I was like, and I almost <laughs> uploaded, I almost uploaded it. And I'm like, oh no. And, and then, yeah, we were all laughing because, uh, yeah, uh, it, uh, you know, it, it doesn't pick up the subtleties. And so you're right. It's wonderful. Absolutely. Like and, and, the thing, and the thing is, as you, I, as you so rightly said, well, I like the fact that you're working on, on putting a book together. So the fact that writing, writing podcast content is also had me mean uh, writing my first book about networking. So oh, the content, I love it. So the content which I have, I mix, I mix, I mix bits from, from pieces and bits from here and there, and I put together a book about that. So that's what I'm Amelia, doing. That's it. awesome. I, I, I look forward to seeing your book. Will you please make sure you like, make sure I can get a copy because I think, it's real, no, I think it's really important. And are you, because I'm also at the same time researching the whole thing about um, publishing. And so, <laughs> you know, here, you know, it's very easy to self-publish. So I don't know if you're at that stage yet, but if you ever need to talk to someone that's self-published, I've got lots of authors that are really uh, very, very good about sharing. Oh, sharing how thank, they thank you very much. Okay. If you help me with that. That would be awesome. See, that is okay. the power of interacting with them. I agree with you. No, I totally, I totally agree. Yes. And I'm, I love authors. So I'm like, I, I think they're like rock stars. So I really think it's, um, and, and I love books. So I really think it's wonderful to put your content in, into a book. You've got lots of content already. What, what's the last book you've read? Um, okay. It's funny because I, I just did an, also another segment about that. Um, but is it usually on, business related books or is it like, I, 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 well, I'm very lucky because I've got two book clubs. So one is where there's more business related books and the other is more just like amazing books that you have to have read at some point. So uh, the business related 
um, uh, book, and actually I've got it on my Never Split the Difference by Chris Foss. Okay. It's a really good book because he used to be like the USA FBI's top the negotiator, like hostage and incidents negotiator. So he realized wow. that all those. And so he, so every chapter, he gives you this like heart pounding story, right? Of, of some negotiation he's done. And then he, uh, he goes into how the techniques he used in that negotiation can apply to business negotiation. Wow. Very good book. Wow. Very digestible. Very, yeah. There's a lot and of psychology then, involved in there, I guess. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so much psychology. And you're like, oh, wow, this is like very interesting. And, and it doesn't even have to be a business negotiation. He'll say, you know, it could be negotiating with your teenager. It could be negotiating with your partner, you know. Um, so, so a very useful book. And I think it's been published for a while, but for some reason it's gotten back up on the bestseller list. Then there's another beautiful book, um, and it's titled On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. Uh, it's written by an American Vietnamese author, but he was a poet, and this is his first book. It is the most, it's a really raw book, but it's, a, it's, a, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. The language is just beautifully written. And, um, I, I, have, you, have you ever attended the book fair in Sharjah? I haven't been to the Sharjah one, but I go on my social calendar. The Emirates Lit Fest is my go-to. I have to go to that every year. It, it, yeah, it means so much to me. But I hear the Sharjah one is awesome. And of course, there was, there's the Abu Dhabi one too. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, we, we're so lucky that we've got access to so many amazing uh, events. One, one of the ones I really want to go to, I don't know if you've been, it, annually is the one in Jaipur and that one is free so you get yourself to Jaipur and it's absolutely free when is that usually in February usually okay because I know it's still a little bit chilly yeah. but I know quite a few people that have gone and it, and they uh, they're like it's unbelievable and they get world-class authors but yeah no charge wow well, and what I about you what, what, I, I hope they turn um, what right now? I'm in a. I'm reading a book. I'm reading a book. It's called a, a young. Well, a young. Um, let Let me get you the title. It's, it's yeah, here please. Behind, it's here behind me. Let me see. Yes. This is the one. Oh no way! The possibility oh, project. Munir, do you know I have a chapter in there? <laughs> my god this is such a small that world is, tell me which tell me which tell, tell me which it's, chapter um, i think i think it's chapter 13 or and 7 guess, and guess what i'm relying on this model to write my own perfect because don metcalf and sarah bahar are yeah definitely two fabulous ladies i talked to when i said okay i want to do my own book and don don can give you so much information but that book, can I tell you how rewarding it was to be a part of? Because I'm so happy you're reading it. Because yeah. it, it was obviously, you know, from the title, you see it's for young people, but it's not. While, we were, while everyone was writing it, while Don and Sarah were putting it together, they realized, wait a minute, this totally applies to adults too. So may I ask how you found out about the book? Well, I just started. Uh, I just started, to be honest. Um, so but how did you, know. you get a how did you get a copy of it? Uh, how did you? I'm gonna tell you how. It's a very small world. So I got to know Sarah Bahar. Oh, lovely. I went to well, not long than a month ago. I was invited by the founder of um, you know, so Waiting Pearls, the pearl farm, which is in Rafa Yes, Prima. yes, yes. Yes, I got invited for a tour with my wife, and we went there. And uh, the only people that were in the boat with us was Sarah Bahar. No. Yes. And, and actually, I know her husband. I know her husband because I, I had an interview three months ago with him. And, uh, and she said, yeah, I'm writing a book and I can help you with the publishing. Let's meet, to get, let's oh, meet again. My God. So one week later, we met again at In5 here in the, the Knowledge Village In5 incubator. And she, 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 brought, she brought along a, um, a copy. And she said, please uh, take it and read it. It's fantastic. 
uh, if you have if you have the idea to write a book about networking i mean it's good let me know and this is the perfect format right here it's it's so a perfect format. it's so easy to grab and to read and guess what by the end of the week i will eat this one that's right that's right and I, and, and it was all done here it was all printed public everything so, so where, where is your where is your chapter I, i'm uh, so i write about have the entrepreneurial mindset and how important it is to have schools teach entrepreneurial skills early. So I'm either chapter seven or chapter three. There you go. There I am. Okay, hang on. Hold on to that. I'm going to take a photo and I'm posting this, Munir. This is hilarious. Can I see your face? Yes, here this it is. is. Hilarious. Okay, you're awesome. I, got, I cannot wait to tell Sarah and Don. They're just going to. Yes, such a small world. You can post it on LinkedIn and tag me. I'm going to go. do, of course I'm going to tag you. <laughs> this is like amazing. Okay, she's so tell lovely. me when. She's lovely she and I heard, so I've heard that she's moving to Saudi Arabia I soon. I know, I'm going to miss her, but that's all right. I mean, the yeah, I mean, again, because it's of far. this. It's not as far, it's one, one hour flight not, away. No, yeah, not far. And she'll be back and forth, they'll be back and forth. So, and, okay, and so for this, your fabulous webinar, how do I see your webinars like how, and how do you post every week so i'm gonna we now we 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 having a conference call with nisa soul to post a, a webinar about women okay right um once this is done i will let you know about the date sure and then i will we'll communicate around it it's gonna and be i would awesome. love to just share it i just would love to share it out okay it's gonna be awesome thank you so much thank and you I'm, very I'm much there's a lot we can talk about, but yeah. Oh, um, yes. Yes. The, very, the possibilities. Ha very happy to do, um, also very happy to do just, um, you know, uh, a panel or a women's on women networking. Cause I think that was very deep. You really got into a lot of stuff there. Absolutely. Uh, I would okay. be more than pleased to have you as a panel speaker, uh, or participant for the, for the, for this webinar. Yeah. For any webinar actually. Yeah. yeah. And if we okay. can bring Thank along you. some people that might be, that might be interested. Uh, oh yeah yeah no i can totally uh, and 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 if nessa so wants to do something similar yes. then it makes sense to, we, okay. we are doing it in partnership they are now okay. uh, st we are okay. fabulous partners. fabulous All i'll right. look forward to talking to you again and i hope we meet in person soon absolutely and i will share with you the nisa soul website my website so you can compare but you can just pop to their website to understand the lifestyle you want to understand the ecosystem uh, for sure. women is just it takes you to another world it's really, really I, nice. I, I will look forward to, I'll go on to that next. Thanks so sure. much. Have a great thank day. You, thank you very much. I don't know if I have your WhatsApp number. Um, okay. Are you ready for it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. 